Hey, what's up, traders? Welcome back to another lesson. In this lesson, I'm... Mm. Hey, what's up, traders? Welcome back to another lesson. Sorry, this one is a little bit later than usual. I was on holiday last week with my girlfriend. We actually went up to Noosa, where the great Nick Raj lives. Got to eat at some of his recommended restaurants that he recommended on Twitter recently, and it was fantastic. Anyway, we're back to work now. And in this lesson here, uh, this is from the mastery course. It's a I'm answering a question here that was asked by a student in the course. And the reason I'm posting this on YouTube is because while it's a bit of an edge case and not everyone will want to do this sort of thing that the student wants to do in, in his particular script, working with the Ichimoku cloud in a particular way, which I'll explain in a moment. I think that the techniques in this lesson can be useful, especially to um, traders who are relatively new to PineScript and still trying to wrap their head around things like tracking values after a certain condition is met detecting price patterns around certain conditions, that sort of thing. I think this will be a valuable lesson for you guys. Uh, the next lesson I'm working on, I'm hopefully going to revisit Pine Connector because there's been a lot of changes with um, the Pine Connector expert advisor. So I do want to go back into automation and, and um, automating our scripts through PineScript. I want to revisit that um, a new and improved series on that subject. But for now, I hope you find this lesson interesting. Uh, if you have any suggestions, as always, leave them in the comments section. I read all the comments. I can't always respond to all of them, but I do check on them. Um, some are really kind, some are not, not so kind, and uh, some are very helpful in guiding um, the subjects that I cover in these lessons. So thank you for that. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the lesson. question comes from Marty, I believe is how you pronounce your name. Sorry if I butchered that. Um, he asks a question about the Ichimoku cloud. He says here, as I know, one of the features of using Ichimoku cloud is finding potential support and resistance. In the image he sent me, if I drag this over, can I do that? Yes. Uh, this is the image he's talking about. This is the baseline of the Ichimoku cloud. And his plan is to write a script in which it shows the baseline only when it is horizontal. And he also wants this horizontal line to be saved into a variable that he can reference to tell whether the price is above or below that horizontal line. So this is actually quite an easy thing to achieve. The first thing I'm going to do is throw in the Ichimoku cloud inbuilt indicator from the TradingView team. I'm going to open this up, copy and paste all of this code out into a new blank script. And I'll just call this delete for now, since I'm not going to keep this script, but you can name this whatever you want, obviously. Um, and if I get rid of these two indicators and throw this on, we now have the inbuilt Ichimoku indicator on our charts. Um, a couple of things I'm going to do here is I'm going to disable all of the displays here. I'm not going to bother formatting this code to look nicer like I normally do, just to save time because it's not really relevant. Hopefully you guys by now um, have your own style of formatting your scripts and you, you know how to do that. So for this sort of lesson or demonstration, I'm going to turn off all of the default plots since we don't want them um, in this particular case. Uh, if I save that code, all of those lines should go away. There we go. We still have the background color there. I'll leave that on for now just so that we know what the Ichimoku Cloud is doing. And if you come in, in the settings menu and go to style, you can turn all these back on if you want, but they're now off by default. So in order to track the baseline, let me turn that one on for a moment. The baseline is this uh, red line you see here on my chart. We wanna track this line only when it's moving sideways. So when it's doing this, this, oops, sorry, my phone is ringing. I need to answer this one second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, now, I believe I was talking about tracking this line only when it's moving horizontally. So when it's doing this, we don't want to draw it. We only want to draw it when it's going sideways. And we want to track that price value as well. So this is pretty easy to do. All I'm going to do here is create a VAR persistent variable. So remember, VAR variables do not get reset on every bar. So this will track the price when it's going horizontal. I'm going to call it baseline saved and it's going to be set to baseline by default when it's first initialized. And then I'm going to use an if statement here that says if the baseline, which is our red line, the inbuilt um, 
calculated Donchian, however you say that word, Donchian um, line, if this red line is not equal to its value on the previous bar, that means it's moving either down or up. If this value is equal to the previous bar, then it's going sideways, obviously. So this if statement will track that. All we need to do now is save our baseline saved variable. So now this variable will be assigned the value of baseline. And then we can say else. So if the baseline is not equal to the previous baseline, that means the line is moving down or up, as I said. And we want to set baseline saved to NA. So it doesn't draw anything on the chart. And so now we can plot this onto our chart, just using the plot function. Um, baseline saved is the value we want to plot. I'll give it a color of color.purple. And we need to make sure that we set the style, whoops, to plot.style underscore line br. br uh, is short for break. And that will break the line um, whenever its value is not equal to the previous value. So I'll show you what I mean here. First of all, let me title this really quick. We'll call it baseline saved. Save my code. And now we have this purple line drawing here. And sorry, it's first thing in the morning. I'm still waiting for my coffee to kick in. I have put these around in the wrong order. So the, I'm actually tracking only when it's moving down, which is the opposite of what we want. So here we, we're saying, some of you would have picked that up while I was explaining this. But now if the baseline on the current bar is not equal to the baseline on the previous bar, then we set baseline saved to NA or nothing. Otherwise, if these two values are the same, that means that we are going sideways or horizontal and we do save the baseline value. So now if I save my code, we should be getting the correct thing happening here. There we go. So now the purple line is only drawing when the red line is horizontal. And so now I can turn off our baseline, red line, save my code. And uh, whoops, what have I done? I have forgotten to put in the parameter name. That'll do it. Save the code, let that load, there we go. So now you can see that we have a really nice support and resistance kind of thing happening here. Uh, and it is tracking our baseline only when it's going horizontal. Now, as soon as this baseline changes, the value changes, we stop drawing our horizontal line. If for whatever reason you wanted to continue drawing that line, you could just get rid of this statement and make this equals and then save my code. And now it's going to save that line regardless of if there's a new baseline. But for now, I'll leave it how it was. Uh, whoops, save my code. And to wrap up this lesson, I'm going to show you how to track if price is above or below this purple line. Um, so that too is pretty easy. I can just say here, um, is price above baseline equals is a closing price greater than baseline saved. And then just to track this in an easy manner, I'm going to use a background color function and we'll just say if price is above our baseline, then set the color to color.green, actually color.new, color.green, and then we need to add some transparency, otherwise it'll be very bright. Um, and otherwise, if price is not above, if the closing uh, price value of the current candle is not greater than our purple line, then we want to set the color to color.red with 50% transparency. And that's it. Now if I save my code, we should be getting a background color. There we go, it's still pretty bright. But you can see that the script is tracking when price is above our purple line. Now because we set baseline save to NA, that kind of complicates things here because what it's doing is now when our baseline is NA, it's just plotting red. So what we need to do here is say, uh, I'll simplify this a little bit. Um, let's say uh, price trading above BL for baseline and price trading below BL for below the uh, baseline. And what we can say here is, is price above baseline and not NA uh, baseline saved. Now I can copy this down here and say not. So this is gonna be a little bit confusing, especially for those of you who are newer to uh, Pine. 
Uh, you probably shouldn't be watching this lesson if you aren't. You should go through the course uh, as it's laid out, as a lot of this information is explained throughout the course in a methodical way. But what we're doing here is we're saying this is a Boolean value that will only be true if price is trading above the baseline, so the closing price is above our baseline saved, and our baseline saved is not an A. So now I can change this code here maybe to say, let me cut this out, this will make sense in a moment. I'll have two background color functions here. Price trading above baseline and price trading below baseline. I'll paste that in. And so now when I save this code, hopefully I've done this correctly and I have, now what we're seeing is that when our purple line is drawing, let me lower the transparency of this a bit because it's still a bit too bright. So now when price is trading above this purple line and the purple line is drawing onto our chart, our background turns green. And this Boolean value here is tracking. It'll be only set to true if this condition is met. So we have a baseline that's horizontal and price is above it. This variable, on the other hand, is the opposite. We must have a baseline going horizontal and price must be below that baseline. And that's it. That uh, pretty much, um, if I turn off the cloud, that is answering the question from Marty. Now, what you do with this information is up to you. And obviously there's a million different things you could do with this. You could track uh, price action patterns while price is above or below this purple line. Um, you could track tests. So like here, for example, it's a very nice test. Bullish engulfing candle, uh, hammer candle followed by a bullish engulfing candle right off this baseline while it's moving horizontal. Really nice trading opportunity there. You could track this sort of thing by checking, um, you know, you could have candle pattern equals price trading above BL and low, uh, let's say previous low, is lower than our baseline saved and the closing price of the current bar is greater than baseline saved. That would um, detect a candlestick rejection off our baseline. And if I use the plot shape function here and we say candle pattern color, uh, well, let's go style equals shape dot uh, triangle up color dot green, save my code. That should be tracking. Yeah, there we go. I've got the thing in the wrong place. Uh, uh, location equals location dot below bar. Save my code. And let me lower the transparency on this too. It's annoying me. Now, oh, oh, that was the opposite. Whoops, I need to go the other way. There we go. So now you can see we're tracking rejections off this baseline when it's moving sideways. Uh, you could obviously do the opposite for short trades. Um, it's not perfect, it needs some refinement. This, for example, isn't a rejection off the line. This is a recovery back above the line. But you get the idea. With a few more conditions added to these checks, you could detect candlestick patterns above or below or on these uh, baselines. In the mastery course, I left this lesson off here, um, but I'm going to expand this lesson just slightly to explain how you can better track uh, actual rejections off these um, purple lines. So all I did here, if I scroll down to the bottom of my script, let's add some white space here. I added one more condition to our candle pattern bull and candle, ba uh, candle pattern bear Boolean uh, conditions. So now, instead of just checking if price is trading above the um, baseline or below the baseline, we check is price trading above the baseline and was it trading above the baseline on the previous bar? That gets rid of a lot of false signals. So now you can see we're getting a lot more sort of accurate rejections off this purple line. So whenever the purple line is going horizontally and price tests it, trades above it, and then gets rejected and closes back below it, we get this um, arrow drawing above or below that candle. Now, I'm not saying you should trade this. Uh, obviously, it's very rudimentary, but with a bunch of additions, you can detect really nice trading patterns like this. For example, you could check for hammer candles off this purple line. You could check for bullish engulfing candles. This candlestick pattern right here, a 
long wick to the downside followed by a close in the upper third of the candle followed by a bullish engulfing candle or a bearish example in the opposite direction uh, would look something like this and we're rejected to the downside sorry I don't know why I bother drawing with this tool I'm terrible at it but hopefully you get the idea um, that is a candlestick pattern that I love to trade in my own uh, trading I often implement this candlestick pattern into um, whatever sort of market condition I'm trying to capture. So for example, I have my ultimate pullback indicator. If I throw that on really quickly, once it loads, uh, you can see that this also picks up this exact same pattern above a moving average. So those are just some ideas to play around with. I'll, I'll wrap the lesson up here. The source code will be below with the added uh, changes to the code to make the candlestick pattern detection a little bit more accurate. And so yeah, I'm going to leave this lesson here. As always, a link to this source code will be below in the description. If you did find this lesson interesting, please hit the subscribe button and all of that YouTube jargon that I'm supposed to say, and I'll speak with you in the next lesson. Don't forget to check out the mastery course if you're new to PlanScript, I think you'll find it incredibly valuable. A lot of traders have so far, that's why I feel confident saying that. If you sign up, I'd love to have you there and I'd love to help you on your journey. If not, that's fine too. Stick around on uh, the YouTubes and I'll be back soon with some more content. Take care and good luck with your trading as always.